What's up all my plant lovers? Devin is here back for another episode of Plant Vibes TV. In this episode, I wanted to go through some of the different things, products, tools, whatever you want to call it, that I like to have on hand, in store, in my home, pretty much at all times, um, so that I can make my house plants as happy as possible. Yeah, I'm gonna be going through things that I buy, but I'm also gonna be going through things that I like to use, like multi-purpose, things that maybe I use in the kitchen that I've now use in my house plant, on my house plants. Um, you know, life is expensive and especially right now. Um, so if there's things that I've learned along the way that are typically used, uh, you don't know, in the office, but I think they have a better serve, they serve a better purpose with my house plants. Well, that's kind of what this video is all about. Um, so I was just doing a little bit of reading. This is the, the, the World Book of House Plants by Elvin McDonald. If you want some old school wisdom, this is from the 60s. If you want some old school wisdom to really kind of give you new perspectives on houseplants, check this book out. This guy, um, I did a little research on the gentleman. I didn't know anything about him. Turns out he truly is a houseplant master. And uh, I think he wrote this book when he was like 25 or something like that. But it is chock full of beautiful wisdom. Um, anyways, let's get into the video. I've been growing plants my whole life. My family and I, we've been growing and selling plants since the 60s. So I have a lot of experience trying different products out, trying different tools, trying different things out to make plants as pretty and happy as possible. Um, so, you know, I always like to have a lot of different kinds of ways to cut and prune and keep house plants clean. You know, cleanliness is to godliness. And uh, one thing that my mom got me a couple years ago are these, um, they're considered herb scissors. Let me see if I can get it back in. They're considered like herb scissors. So you go, you imagine you have some basil or whatever, some rosemary, you go and you use these nice little uh, pointed scissors to go and harvest some herbs. Well, I find these are very awesome for uh, plants that have like a lot of stems and you're trying to really kind of like get right in there without damaging any other, th any other leaves or any other flowers, whatever. Um, so I like to have some just general kind of like herb scissors so that I can easily go in and cut old leaves out without damaging the rest of the plants. It's much easier to use these than like some of our more heavier duty shears uh, or pruners. Um, I got tons of different ones that I have like kind of, I have try to have some wherever I have house plants because these are so, they're so important, so handy. I use them all the time. Um, so I have, I have these herb scissors, but I also have these nice, these are Kuhn Rikon um, little shear, I don't know, little cutters. I don't know what you even call them. I think they're honestly designed for the kitchen, um, but I find them really great for some of our like medium thickness in stems. These are really great for kind of like the smallest leaves, like you can just get in there really nice. These are a little bit thicker, a little bit more heavy duty. So uh, for like thicker stems, these ones are great. And they seem like I never, I never oil them up, I never grease them, and they're always, you know, really, really awesome, really, really good. Um, in terms of like more heavy duty, like pruning shears, you gotta go with the Falcos. These are gonna get through, these are Falcos number number five. Um, these are always gonna cut through like some of your thicker, heavier, woody stems. Um, I use these outside on anything from lavender, hydrangea, what have you. But I also use these inside on plants that are like a little bit thicker. Uh, I don't know, maybe like a ficus or something with like a, a nice woodier stem. Um, I was gifted these ones, these, you just saw what happened. Um, they're all metal and your hand slides and slips out of it. It's very unsafe. I have these hanging up as decorative purposes. I never use these because they, they suck. Um, like they're sharp and they work well, but like who, like your hand slips every single time you use it. So it's very, very unsafe when you're dealing with sharp tools. So don't get one, you know, you wanna make sure that has, uh, you wanna get one that has kind of like a rubber hand grip. Um, very, very important. But they kind of look cool hanging up over here next to, um, I was also gifted at the same time this little apron, I never use aprons while I'm dealing with my plants, but <laughs> that looks cool, it makes me look like a gardener. Uh, I already know in my heart that I am. I, uh, you know, I, I also put this nice little like hanging thing up here. I have my uh, Tritoscantia Nanook, and this is a um, 
Philodendron Pink Princess, just hang in here. So one of my goals inside my home is to really have, you know, wherever I look, wherever I look, wherever I look, there needs to be a plant there. Um, and I thought this was a cool thing to have here. Yeah, I had plants here, but I'm just trying to really visually fill my eyes with plants all the time. All right, let's continue the tour. All right, so every gardener, whether you're you know, a houseplant gardener, outdoor gardener, or hopefully both, um, hopefully you have outdoor space, hopefully you have indoor space that you can grow plants, you should always have a nice selection of old used pots. Um, you can wash these if you want to. I, even, I don't really even do that. I just let them sit out for like a few months before using them. But having a bunch of different variety of pots on hand at all times is hugely important. Um, you know, maybe you're starting new propagations. Maybe you're planting up to the next size. You need to have a really wide variety of these pots on hand all the time. I don't, you never really need to buy these. You know, you, you probably you're, every time you buy a plant, you're given one of these, so just keep it. Um, don't keep them all. If you keep them all, you're gonna have like a garage full of them. Um, I, I do have a garage full of them, but that's a different story. Um, it's really just a great idea. Hold, you know, keep them on hand. If you find that you don't use them after a long time, just get rid of them, uh, whatever. Um, with my house plants, I always like to have like a nice little old kind of Tupperware bowl. And, uh, and what I'll do is, you know, if I need to make like a real specialty kind of mix, maybe I need like a, a, a mix that's like, I don't know, 50% potting mix, 50% sphagnum moss. Well, then I can just go in here, uh, put my potting mix in here, add the sphagnum moss that I want. Or uh, lately I've been growing some new succulents, some real cool new succulents. So what I'll do, I'll do that. And then I'll add some of these, uh, these are decorative stones, like mini marble chips that I got from Home Depot. I always have these on hand um, because I'll mix these with this potty mix, I create a nice chunky mix for my succulents. It's really nice, chunky, and drains really well. So some of the other kind of like added, you know, um, additions that I have for my mixes, you know, I always have perlite, I always have sphagnum moss. I typically have orchid bark, uh, charcoal. Those are ingredients are a little bit more expensive. So um, I actually, I have them in here already. I don't have any extras on hand. I probably should get more and re-up that. Um, I did want to mention, you know, everything, not everything, but most of the things I'm gonna be talking about in this video, if you do wanna actually purchase them yourselves, uh, you can go to the link down in the description. It takes you to my Amazon shop. Um, yeah, I get like a 0.04% kickback if you buy anything on in the shop. Uh, but really I just have, you know, the things that I really like to buy on Amazon, I have them listed in there. Make it easy for you guys so you can easily find what I'm talking about. Just go in there and you can find them easy. So yes, of course, I always have a big bin of potting mix soil. And um, you know, typically I have this filled with my houseplant potting mix. It's a real easy five ingredient recipe and I use it for the bulk of my houseplants. Um, super easy to follow and it's great if you can put it in like a big bat in a big uh, bin like this, makes it really easy if you get new plants a lot um, to have it on hand. All right, so let's get to this little weird, funky built-in shelf thingy. Um, some of the things that you know, in terms of pest control, I always have this insect insecticidal super soap. This is like an organic kind of um, soap that you can use. I recently had spider mites on a couple of my anthurium. Use this for about a week and it really helped get rid of them uh, very quickly. Um, another one that I like to use is this. This is like the insect disease and mite control. Um, this is also great for if you have aphids. Um, that's kind of the most kind of things that you'll have on your house plants, but you can also use it outside. And um, you can also use it on like mealy bugs. But you know, when you're using these kind of products, do it somewhere safe. Don't do it in like your kitchen or I don't know, uh, maybe do it out in like a garage, somewhere where you're not gonna be inhaling it very much and it's not gonna be kind of living with you for a while. Um, you can also use alcohol. I used uh, just this rubbing alcohol to get rid of mealy bugs. Um, it's kind of a hassle. You gotta like do like a real like, 
use a Q-tip and just kind of point in to get those mealy bugs one after another after another. Um, and those little you know pockets of mealy bugs and it's really hard to do but mealy bugs suck. Uh, you're better off just like pitching those plants I would say. But you know alcohol rubbing alcohol does work for that. I like to have plant tags. Most of my stuff, not everything, but most of my stuff is always labeled with plant tags. These are metal ones. I stopped using the metal ones because they were just a little bit overly bulky. Um, but I have some other ones that I have been using. These cute little like plastic ones. That way, you know, when your friends are over and you want to impress them, you'll have the Latin name right there. You know, this is my, uh, I don't know, Anthurium vitarifolium. Isn't that cool? I sound so, sound so suave. And it is cool. You do sound suave. Um, what else do I have? Okay, so this guy, super important. This is like green, green floral tape um, used in the floral industry for basically keeping bouquets together. But what I like to use it for, um, I will actually use this to like anything that has like a pole um, whether it's my Raphidophora, Discursiva, my Monstera, um, what else, my Pink Princess, anything that has like a bamboo stake or a pole um, and you're trying to train it upwards, I like to use this because this is not going to, it's not going to like pierce into the, the side of the stems. If you use really kind of fine string over time, pressure gravity will cause like the string to actually like damage the cell walls of those stems. So, you know, this is, it's thicker, it's fatter, and it's not gonna drive into those stems. So I love to use this, wrap it around the, the stem with the pole, and it really creates a nice kind of cell, uh, sturdy, but safe and effective environment. And it's, you know, it's easy to do. It's, stick, it's not, it's like sort of sticky, but not super sticky. Um, it's perfect and when you wanna, Get rid of it, you just cut it, and it's, it's chill, it's super easy. So what else do I have? This guy, this is my thermometer, temperature thermometer. Oh, that's in, in your face. Um, it shows you like temperature, humidity, these kinds of things. When I first got it, it was pretty cool. You know, I was using it a lot, uh, but then you kind of get the feel for the temperature in your home, in your growing space. If you do have different areas, you'll kind of after a while, you'll start to really kind of understand the temperatures in your, uh, where, uh, of the soil of your plants, and you can feel if there's any changes, any differences, but it's kind of cool, kind of helpful. Okay, I'm measuring my pink princess right now, and, you know, saying 44% relative humidity, and the soil is at 66.4 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, it's just, it's cool to know. Especially, you know, if it feels cool, like a little bit cold where you're living or a little bit hot, it helps you to kind of understand if you need to increase the heat or decrease the heat. Most plants like to be between 62 and maybe 75, I would say it would be like the upper limit. Above those can be a little bit, not stressful, but it's above and beyond or below and beyond. Um, I like to have a microscope, not microscope, a magnifying glass. Um, it can be really tricky, you know, you are you got all these plants, maybe you don't clean them all the time, and you start to see some like cobwebs, you're like, oh crap, is that like spider webs? You know, like, do I have spider mites, or is it just like dust? Um, so having a, a magnifying glass that's nice and works, you can kind of tell, all right, oh, this is just cobwebs. All of our plants get cobwebs. And when you start to see that kind of web like go between the leaves, you start to get scared. You're like, oh crap, what did I do wrong? Like, I, not, you know, I gotta chop it off, I gotta go clean it, gotta go put it in quarantine, all these sort of things. Uh, but really, if you had magnifying glass, you could tell, oh, it's actually just dust. Um, what else do I have? I got... These things, these should be in the kitchen. These are my old like wooden spoons. What I do is I'll actually come in here and I will, uh, you know, mix it by hand, sometimes like this. It's kind of helpful, convenient, if you're mixing just small amounts. If it's big amounts, then maybe not. 
Um, what else I got in here? What do I use this serrated knife for? Something. It's dirty. Um, let's see. These are cool. These are like floral water picks. Maybe you've seen them in your vases that you've bought at your florist before. Um, basically the idea is this one has water in it still. I don't really want it to have water in it anymore. Dump it out. Um, these are cool because you fill them with water, you put the lid on top and let's say you got a, you know, they're mainly for like plants that are flowering consistently or um, on a relative like frequent basis. Fill it with water, cut your flower, put the you know stem in there and you can bring the flower with you in your car. You can give it to your wife, you know, bring it to her at work, cool things like that. So these little cute guys are kind of handy, convenient. Um, I like them. Yeah, so this is what I was talking about. Like this kind of string, after a while, it's great, but after a while, it really can bore its way into the stems. Um, I noticed that on my Monstera, and so that's when I switched to the floral tape. And I much prefer, it's much easier to work with this too. Let's see. Um, this is my fertilizer I like to use. This is my family's formula. Uh, it's called Roberta's Bounty. It's got like micronutrients and macronutrients. Um, really great. I use it on all my indoor plants. And um, yeah, like once, twice a month. It's chill. It's good. Let's see. Timers. I don't, I can't think of anything more important in my houseplant garden. Well, maybe my grow lights. Uh, these are so pivotal, so key. Um, I know I have a link for this in my Amazon shop. You set the timer, boom! Every morning, 7 a.m., lights turn on. Every night, 7 p.m., lights turn off. Hugely important. I have like 10 of these in my house. All my lights are connected to these. Get them if you use grow lights. Um, Okay, here we have some more just small pots. These are propagation stuff. Um, these little trays are used for microgreens. I haven't used them yet, but I like to grow microgreens. It's super easy, super fun. Um, when I'm growing my microgreens, um, I like to use these cocoa disc. These are the coir cocoa disc. I don't, I'm not a big fan of using cocoa coir like as an additive for my houseplant uh, soil media. Um, I prefer peat for sure. This just stays a little bit too wet too long, but I like to have them on hand. It is like a last ditch effort. If I really just need a little bit of extra potting mix, a little bit of soil media extra, having these in hand in these convenient uh, pucks, um, you rehydrate them with water, can be, you know, can be a lifesaver at times. Okay, so these are like biodegradable um, little seed starting cups and um, these are awesome because you start your seeds in these guys and then you can just transfer it right into your pot um, you, you know imagine you're starting you know 10 tomatoes start them in these guys and then when you're ready to transport them to a larger container you just plant the whole thing in that's really helpful um, small plants you have you know really delicate roots and um, when you're transporting them, trans transplanting them, you know, if you don't have, you know, the most uh, seasoned, experienced hands, maybe you damage it, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, so these can be kind of come in handy. Let's see what I got in here. Oh yeah. Always gotta have some of these yellow insect traps around the house. Um, in my greenhouse in here, I was getting some gnats. Um, Oh, it's on. I was getting some gnats, so I hung some of these up, and you can just see them, see the gnats flying into them, you know, into them all the time. Uh, I, you know, we all get gnats; they suck. Uh, having these is helpful because it can help, like, eliminate them, but it doesn't go to the root cause. It doesn't actually like eliminate the babies from, you know, starting. So if you want to like get rid of the gnats, if you have a bad case of the gnats and you wanna get rid of them, what you wanna use is, it's called, um, let me see, Bacillus thuringiensis israelensis. Okay, 
I have some in here. This stuff's expensive, um, but it works really, really well. So I have like this little bag was like 20 bucks. And um, basically what you do, you mix it like, what is the mixing ratio? A teaspoon, a teaspoon of this to a gallon of water. And then you just, you know, water your plants with that mixture like you would normally water your plants. And what it does is it's gonna kill out those fungus gnats that are in the soil. That's the bad, that's the root cause. That's what you wanna do. If you have a bad case of fungus gnats, you need to get this and use it. Um, there's tons of different bacillus thuringiensis out there. Um, for a while I was using the wrong subspecies. You gotta get the one that says Israelian, is, it looks like Israel, Israelensis. I was using one like Curringensis or something like that. Using it for like a month, nothing was happening and it's because I was using the wrong one. So you gotta use the right one. So this stuff, this stuff is like worth its weight in gold if you have a really bad case of the fungus gnats. Let's see, what else do I have? Ah, uh, yes. Um, so liquid rooting concentrate. This stuff is pretty good. If you do a lot of cuttings and you don't have a lot of success with them, like you can use liquid rooting, um, this liquid rooting concentrate. Basically what you do is you take your cutting and then you dip it. You, they have instructions depending on what you're actually going to be propagating if it's a begonia versus like a monstera or whatever, a ficus. They're all like different, like hardwood versus softwood uh, versus semi-hardwood. Like they all have like a different concentration level. So this is the concentrate and you mix it with the correct parts of water according to what you are propagating. And you basically just do a quick dip and then you put it into whatever you're going to be, whatever vessel you're going to be propagating in. I don't use it, honestly, I really don't. Um, and the reason I don't is because I, use my heat mat. So I get some questions sometimes. Let, let's do a quick, well, we'll finish up this real quick and then I'll, I'll tell you more about that here in a second. Um, a couple more tools I like to use. Chopsticks. These things are amazing. Chopsticks are one of my favorite tools. I have these cool um, reusable metal ones. Chopsticks are amazing. Why? Because imagine you have this tiny little pot. Imagine. You have this small little pot full of soil, full of perlite, whatever, and you have this really nice delicate cutting. How do you get like that perfect hole in your soil medium to put that cutting? I love using chopsticks. You just, and it's really easy, really fast. And these cool metal ones, uh, you know, they're just, they're cool, aren't they? Metal. Um, what else do I have over here? Um, that's kind of it. Tons of containers, always have tons of extra containers. That's obvious. Let's see. Ah, over here. All right, so if you caught my video about how to water plants, like the ideas of surrounding like watering plants and how to develop the right mindset for it, um, I briefly touched on watering trays these are the drip trays you put beneath your plants. Um, personally, I love the look of the terracotta ones, but I mentioned briefly, if you have terracotta, a terracotta tray underneath your container and it's on wood or if it's on anything, over time it will kind of create um, some molding below. So it's really important to have a lot of good plastic ones too. These, one, these plastic ones that look like terracotta are super helpful. Um, ton, always have tons of trays. You know, you can even use uh, sometimes, for my propagations, I'll use like old Tupperwares. It's great, fantastic. You can also use like, this was a, I don't know, Samantha got some like burger somewhere and she brought it home. And um, this is great. These are great drip trays put underneath like, you could put like four different propagation starts in here. And it's fantastic because it's plastic and it's not gonna leave marks underneath. Um, I also have like an excess of old, my parents just, just given me tons of old plates. Um, if they're glazed, like a glazed ceramic plate, these are also awesome drip trays to put underneath your containers because these will not allow moisture to sit, seep through. So that's huge. Um, some of my other states here. 
Maybe you've seen my video on using moss poles and maybe you heard me say that I don't really care so much for the moss trays. Um, they don't, or the, the moss poles, I don't really, the whole moss aspect is, I don't know, kind of pointless if you ask me. Um, but I love using dowel rods. So a moss pole is basically just a dowel rod covered with moss. Uh, I just use the dowel rods and these are awesome. I have a saw around here somewhere and I just cut it to the length that I want and then I put them with the plants. Tons of different thicknesses. Uh, I currently don't have any more, just these guys. Um, but I also like to have these kind of, you know, these kind of things. These are cool little bamboo trellises that I made. Um, let's see, this one I made. You can see it's like bamboo stakes, get them at Home Depot, wherever. And then cut some smaller ones in the middle, put some hot glue right there, hot glued them. This is the perfect little thing for, I don't know, a Synjonium uh, vanilla. Those are, I have vanilla and Synjonium using these right now. Um, so that's cool, I like it. What else do I have? So another thing that I like to have on hand, I don't use it a ton, but when I do use it, it's super effective, and that's diametaceous earth. I know it has some alternative uses, um, especially in the health, health industry, health world, um, but what it, it has like a, these really like sharp, fine, it's like really sharp, fine something or other. Um, I don't, honestly don't, I can't remember what it is, but it's totally safe, totally, you know, organic, easy, you know, you're, it's not a chemical, it's not a pesticide. But when you put it onto the soil, um, the sharpness, if you have those fungus gnats that are in there, they will actually, it will actually pierce them and, and kill them, which is, which is good. That's what you want. You want to get rid of those fungus gnats. Uh, but as soon as you wet them, when they're wet, they're, they're, it's not effective. When it dries again, it will become effective again. Um, but it's something, you know, if you do have gnats or you do have some of this sort of soil borne problem that you could see on the, sur on the surface of the soil, use this and it'll get rid of them. It's a little bit, it's not super pretty, but definitely effective. So my favorite, probably my favorite thing, my favorite tool thing that I use for my house plants for propagation uh, purposes is my heating pad. This guy was like 15 bucks. You can see there's a black heating pad underneath here. Um, this saves my life. I love it. Um, I had a, I posted a video recently about how to care for jade plants, Crassula ovala, and um, I showed how to propagate it. And basically, I just cut it off and put it in soil, and I put it on the heat pad, and it roots very, very quickly. I had some people ask me, oh, well, don't your propagations, shouldn't you like let them callus over um, before you put them into the prop, uh, put them back into a, a soil? And the answer is yes, you should, unless you're using a heat pad. The heat pad really um, helps the soil heat up to really encourage root formation super fast. Um, so if you've had problems with your propagations rotting before they are able to root, get a heat pad. This was 15 bucks, awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so now I'll show you guys some of the lighting systems that I have in here. Um, you know, it's easy. It's a little, it takes a little bit of planning to, to do it right, to get the lights in the right locations with the cords hidden. Uh, but I'll, I'll just give you a quick little demo and you can see some of my plants in the process. Uh, here you can see that dowel rod that I was talking about earlier. It's perfect in there. It does exactly what it needs to. And um, here you can see that floral tape that I was talking about. So I like to change the floral tape out every, you know, while it starts to grow a little bit taller. I'll undo that floral tape and add it in somewhere else. Um, you can see sphagnum moss in there. I use that as a, I know a lot of people don't like putting sphagnum moss on the top of the soil, uh, but I did it to cover that black plastic pot that I have slipped inside of here. And it's not my favorite either, but it works. Um, so here I have this dual light and it has its own timer um, right there, which is convenient. I like that. These lights up here are my favorite. These are um, like architecture lights. You can really move them all around. Let's see, you can kind of angle it however you want, move it however you want. It's really cool, really functional. And I just use a GE grow light in, that, in there as the bulb and it does wonders. Right now I'm growing that banana. 
You can see another one of these architecture lamps. It's so cool, so functional. And if I want to give more love to my peace lily, I can. I want to go back to my epiphyllum, or actually it's a disocactus, then I can. Okay, here you can see some of my succulents that I was talking about that I've recently planted up using those like pebbles. You can see the pebbles are right in there. Super cool, right? Really nice, dries up really efficiently. Um, those look great. Here you can see this is the jade plant I recently root pruned. Looks pretty. There you can see that little tag I was talking about. It's just nice, I like having tags. You can also put the dates. I, I forgot to put the date on that guy, but I try to. That way you can have a really nice idea of when uh, you planted it. And these are some of my favorite grow lights right here because they're super pliable, super manageable. I can totally change the angle and it stays really well. Um, they also have their own hand, they also have their own timer. You can put on a 12 hour timer, it's fantastic. So this is another bamboo trellis, a couple of different bamboo trellises that I have made. This one, I used uh, hot glue, as you can see. And then this one, I used wire ties. So, you know, it's really easy, functional. I have my little Vornado fan. This guy is really, I don't know, it looks sleek. It's cool, it's like kind of cool, and I can move it around, um, give some airflow to wherever I want. I think that's really helpful for house plants. Oh, there's my vanilla I was just talking about. I actually use, it's a dowel rod. This is a dowel rod style, but um, looks great. Let's see where else do I have. So these kind of clamp-ons are, the clamp-on lights are really kind of easy to, they're not the prettiest, but they are pretty functional. Um, I just put like a screw in there or a nail, whatever, and then just have it hanging. Now all of my lights are on timer. Let's see, can I see the timer? There's the timer down there. It's kind of hard to see right here, but that's where it is. I like to have, uh, you know, at least a couple hanging plants. Um, this is a, a cool little hanging system. Kind of convenient, sort of convenient. And it's allowed me to really get this philodendron uh, Mykins just really taken off. I love it. So like I was saying earlier, if you have the, here you can see this is a terracotta tray. Here you can see the plastic one. I have the plastic one here because it's right on the wood. I have a terracotta here because it's on the book and I don't care if it leaves marks on the book. But yeah. So that was pretty much a tour of all the different kinds of things that I like to have on hand and use with my houseplants um, to keep my houseplants as happy as can be. If there's any other things that you know, I didn't mention that you're wondering about, or any other tools, products that you use um, that I didn't talk about either, leave a comment below. I love to read your experiences. I love to read your plant wisdom that you've gained along your journeys growing plants. That's how our plant community continues to grow. So I hope you found this video a little bit helpful. If you did, think about giving it a little like, uh, maybe share it with someone else that is just getting into the house plant game. Um, and think about subscribing. You know, we're trying to grow this community to spread the plant love as much as we possibly can. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you guys soon. Every Sunday we have a long form video just like this. Catch you soon. Ciao.